so yeah, so this talk is about uh, efficient shuffle arguments. Um, and I would start with a little bit of motivation. So this motivation is electronic voting. So let's say we have some number of voters. Um, voters send their votes to a bulletin board. So this is basically some uh, immutable storage system, either blockchain or something more old-fashioned. Um, from bulletin board, the votes go to a mixed network. And the purpose of this uh, uh, component is to basically anonymize the votes or uh, disconnect the uh, source of, of the vote from, from its destination. And from there on, uh, votes go to some sort of a threshold decryption service. And how can we get the tally? So, and we will focus on this uh, central component in this talk. So, as I mentioned before, our goal here is to get anonymity, or you may also call it location privacy, that essentially you don't want to reveal the origin of the, of the ciphertext. And for this, we can use a mixed network. So it consists of a number of mixed servers, that we call the mixers. Uh, so uh, voters send their ciphertext um, to the first mixer, mixer permutes the ciphertext. Uh, of course, this is not enough because you can still connect the, just by looking at the output. You can connect the input to the output. So you also have to uh, blind the ciphertext, meaning that you randomize them. And the following mixers repeat the same process until you get some ciphertext that are uh, untraceable to the original ciphertext, given that at least one of the mixers didn't uh, reveal his secret permutation. Um, but what if uh, one of the mixers is malicious? So it turns out that this mixer can completely break the system. So for example, he can generate his own ciphertext and in uh, this type of framework, you would not have no way of, uh, of uh, finding out that something went wrong. And the solution for this uh, is a zero knowledge argument. So, essentially, if we want that each mixer would output the proof, um, that uh, preferably it should be a non interactive proof that you can verify maybe even a long time after uh, those mixers are gone. So what's a non-interactive argument? Um, so we have two parties, we have a prover, we have a verifier. Um, prover generates a proof. Uh, and uh, if prover is honest, then the honest verifier should also accept the proof. Um, so non-interactive uh, argument should be zero knowledge, meaning that doesn't leak any information besides uh, the validity of the statement. It should be sound, meaning that Brewer cannot uh, prove any false statements. And sometimes, additionally, we want noise soundness, meaning that if verifier accepts the proof, then Brewer should also know the witness for his statement. Um, you should also choose some security model. Uh, unfortunately, we know that uh, in the standard model, uh, you really cannot get uh, non-interactive zero knowledge unless you work with uh, trivial languages, uh, which is not very interesting. You can get uh, non-interactive zero knowledge in random oracle model, and we actually have many efficient uh, uh, shuffle constructions in random oracle model. So this is not very interesting for us. Um, also, there are some, at least some special cases known where, where random oracle model kind of breaks down. So instead, we will consider a common reference string model in this talk. So what is this common reference string model, or CRS model for short? 
So we have a prover and verifier, and we have a, additionally a trusted third party. So this tr trusted third party generates for us a common reference string. So this is basically some big string with a very specific distribution. And now using this uh, CRS prover, uh, sorry, uh, first prover can uh, pick a statement. Uh, prover also will know a witness for the statement. And now using uh, witness and the CRS proof, prover will generate the proof and verifier will find it either accept or reject this. Okay. And what our research question was here is that how to generate, uh, how to construct an efficient non-interactive shuffle argument in the CRS model. So what's the state of the art uh, at the moment? So least efficiency-wise, there are two results. There's a result uh, by Fauzi and Lipma from CTRSA uh, that achieves the uh, fastest uh, prover. And then there's a result from last year's age group uh, by Fauzi, Lipma, and Zayats that achieves the fastest verifier. So uh, if you would have to choose by efficiency wise, um, then um, you would really have to think which one do you want to be faster, uh, at least currently. Of course, these parameters are not that all that matters. Um, also, what's very important is what type of uh, crypto system you use. So the CTRSA result uh, used, for example, EGMAL, which is kind of very standard. Um, whereas uh, Asia Group used Eiling crypto system, which is probably not many of you have heard about it, uh, which is also a lifted um, uh, crypto system. At least the way they used it, which means that when you decrypt, you also have to compute the discrete logarithm which in turn means that you cannot have very long messages. Um, yeah, so, and what do we achieve? Um, we basically are able to uh, improve on almost all the parameters that we consider here, uh, except for the CRS size, which is somehow in between the two of the, uh, in between those results. Okay. And we also have an uh, implementation. So there have been quite several of these uh, CRS model shuffle papers now, but as far as I know, there have been no implementation, so you can finally see how it actually performs. But more about that later. So as the title of this uh, session might uh, indicate, we will use pairings. So uh, some basic definitions of we have three bilinear groups, G1, G2, GT, of uh, size P, P is a prime, with respect to generators P1, P2, and Pt. We will use additive notation in all groups, uh, together with bracket notation. So this you also saw before. Uh, so basically, instead of writing A times P1, I will write A bracket uh, 1. And then we have a bilinear map, meaning that uh, bracket A paired with bracket P gives you gives me a product in the third group. So A times P. Um, so also what you heard just before, uh, and what we also have to use here is um, generic bilinear group model. So in this model, we essentially uh, assume that. Uh, adversary is kind of blind to the concrete structure of the group elements. So he does not look at the individual bits and so on. And he will only do uh, generic operations, meaning that he will do addition, he will do a pairing operation, and he will do uh, equality checks, and nothing more. So. Uh, what does our uh, shuffle argument look like? Essentially, we have uh, three components. First, we have a permutation matrix argument. Oh. Okay, uh, permutation matrix argument. 
So essentially, we commit to a fragmentation matrix, and this argument will show that that commitment actually con uh, contains a fragmentation matrix. Um, and this is actually based by uh, square span programs, uh, with an old result by Danesis et al. Then we have a consistency argument, uh, which essentially says that uh, the permutation that we committed to was used to shuffle the cipher best. And this is uh, a result by Groth and Lou. Well, or not quite the result, but it's based on their ideas. Uh, so unfortunately, in uh, both of those arguments, we actually need to use different uh, commitment schemes. And to kind of connect them, then we have a same message argument, which uh, uh, essentially tells you that, okay, those commitments are to the same message. Uh, and in here we use a, a recent result by Gilts and Wee, um, which is a, a proof for uh, sublinear uh, spaces. So and now a little bit uh, in more detail, uh, so first is permutation matrix argument. Um, so what's the permutation matrix? It's basically a matrix where on each row and each column we have exactly one one, and all the other entries are zeros. Um, and of course, if you multiply this uh, uh, matrix by a vector, then this vector will be uh, So we will use uh, vector commitment schemes uh, with polynomials. So we have some polynomials, pi, um, that are linearly independent. And the commitment will look as you see here. So uh, these uh, pi polynomials are evaluated at a random point. And also this raw is some random point. Uh, and all of this is in our CRS. And so a commitment to a vector A, that we uh, multiply the respective coordinate of the vector by pi, and then we have some randomizer that uh, uh, hides the commitment. Okay, and then we commit to each uh, row in this permutation matrix. And uh, so, as I mentioned before, what we want to show is that the commitments actually contain a permutation matrix. Uh, and actually, in all those components, these components are actually already well known. So what's actually novel in this result is that we take those components or these puzzle pieces and put them together, and it turns out that this gives you a, a, a nice result. Uh, so for example here, this is actually, actually uh, this uh, AC Group 2016 result, or very similar to this one. Um, and uh, similarly as they did, we will prove it in a generic bilinear group model. Um, since we also have a new CRS, then we have to prove it again. Uh, and in very short, essentially what they do is they have a unit vector argument, which uses square span programs. And um, to get uh, a permutation matrix argument uh, out of this, you basically just need to check that, okay, you have that all uh, vectors are unit vector and they sum together as a all one vector. And this is actually enough to get a permutation matrix. Um, so then we have a consistency argument. Um, so um, the point of this argument is to show that the commitment that we had uh, this is actually used to uh, uh, permute the ciphertext. And uh, as I mentioned before, this uh, main idea comes from a uh, Groth and Lou paper, which was the, uh, I mean, the original uh, CRS-based uh, uh, shuffle paper. Um, but the unfortunate thing is that if you use the same uh, polynomial commitment scheme that we had before, um, then the soundness will not quite work out. Uh, and so we have a similar commitment scheme, uh, but with a different polynomial b hat that we have here. And uh, 
Essentially, these have to be linearly independent to the previous polynomials, and there are a few other requirements. And OK, then we again commit to each uh, row. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we use a similar idea as, uh, as in cross the loop paper, to, uh, actually. So basically, we have, to, in this argument alone, we make the assumption that, OK, suppose that this a hat polynomials or these A hat commitments are to a permutation uh, matrix. And then from that it follows that, okay, uh, this uh, shuffling was uh, done correctly. So, but finally, we, we have now these two parts. So, first, for, uh, for each row, we have uh, two commitments. Uh, for first, uh, commitment, we know that this contains a permutation matrix. For the second commitment, we know that, okay, if the, all the commitments together form a permutation matrix, then this was actually used for shuffling. But now we should kind of connect those two. And uh, so here we can nicely use the uh, Kiltsvi result, which is a quasi-adaptive non-interactive zero knowledge. So quasi-adaptive means that there's a dependency between um, the CRS and the language. Um, and yeah, so the result is, uh, uh, it, uh, it actually allows you to prove that uh, the group uh, basically uh, for a sub-linear space, that something is in a sub-linear space. Uh, so in our case, this uh, matrix M that we have in here, it will be actually those uh, commitment polynomials together, these raw values. Okay, uh, so completeness and zero knowledge in this case follows easily from the Gilt's V result. So uh, this Gilt's V is summed under a certain uh, kernel MDH assumption. Unfortunate thing is that we also need knowledge soundness here. So basically, this, uh, I don't want to go too much into detail here, but uh, this consistency argument uh, achieves a notion called couple soundness. And uh, to get rid of this notion for the whole shuffle argument, then we need uh, knowledge uh, soundness in the same message argument. And, uh, here we also will use a generic bilinear group model. Okay. And finally, a little bit about our implementation. Um, so we use for our implementation a Lipsnark library. This is also used to, uh, to implement the SNARKs in, <coughs> in the set cache uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, it's a C++ implementation, <coughs> and you see uh, quite practical effects in numbers. So, in this first column, we see that for 100,000 uh, ciphertexts, the prover time is um, around one minute, and we can also separate pro both proving and verifying into two phases. So, we can have an offline phase which you can basically do before the voting starts. And then you can have an online phase, which is when the actual votes come in. Uh, so then what we see that this online phase takes only uh, 10 seconds. And for verifier, um, so uh, the time is about one minute and 30 seconds, and the online time is around one minute. Uh, and this was all done on my computer, basically. So in uh, real life voting, you would probably not write on my computer, but and some quite powerful server. Uh, and this 3,300 uh, is interesting because that's about as many people you have uh, voting in Estonian uh, elections. Uh, and if you are interested in checking the implementation out and there's a link and um, this is actually all for me thank you
can you say something about the computational complexity for the prover and the verifier? Um, so, uh, first of all, everything is linear, uh, but I guess that you know. So, uh, on this, in the very beginning, I had some table. Um, so, we basically used some units, which is like, we uh, counted the number of uh, uh, exponentiations and uh, pairings and gave some rough numbers to somehow compare it. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see the relative uh, speech here, but um, I actually don't have, I think in the paper we have actual numbers that, okay, you have this amount of pairings and uh, that and many exponentiations and so on, but I don't remember them from memory. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you, you mentioned this as an alternative to different shuffle arguments. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what sort of your opinion in, in terms of security. So you were basing this on, on the generated group model, mm -hmm. um, compare that to, say, LGML shuffles in the random oracle model or something like that. I mean, which one would you choose? Uh, so that's a hard question. Though. Um, so, so one challenge with this uh, serious based shuffle is that you also have to do the setup phase somehow. Um, but I mean, there are many things to go to consider. So. One thing, for example, what I hear from uh, practical people is that patency is actually a big problem in this field. Um, yeah, but I mean, this deficiency wise, you could easily use it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's from from the implementation you can see that you get efficiency that is good enough to use in practice. So I mean, I think you could use it, use this easily. Any questions? Okay, no, see, so thanks, Yano.